Hi, everybody, to another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. I'm your host, Jose Palomino, and I, and I want to share a few particular thoughts with you today uh, around something we refer to as the competitive edge. So we use two terms here. Uh, we talk about revenue throughput, and we talk about having your competitive edge. So I just want to first define those two things and why we use both. Revenue throughput is the effectiveness, uh, the volume and velocity, right, the amount and speed by which your organization, your company, or your line of business converts opportunities into profitable revenue. And so we visualize your business as a pipe. It has valves, and those valves have to be open to allow revenue to flow through. Now, competitive edge is kind of a little bit of a subset of that because it's actually capturing an essential key to having high revenue throughput. And that is you need to have an edge over your competitors in how you do business, in how you offer value, in how you separate yourself from your competitive set in the eyes of your best customers. And in in simple terms, your competitive edge is how you win. So how you win is what we want to look at today. And we want to look at a subset of all of that. So when we talk about four competitive edge dimensions, four aspects of a competitive edge, they're as follows. Uh, one, it's how you win because you have a sharp value proposition. That's to say you have clarity as to why someone should buy X from you at Y price. And you're able to communicate that clarity to those same prospects. And you know who they are. You know exactly who they are, who they should be. So that you know you have a compelling reason, a differentiated reason why they should buy X from you at Y price. And that's not a small idea. It's a big idea. And it can get glossed over. And well, we know what we do. And they know what we do. And the reality is most of us, in regardless of what we do, what we offer, are in something of a commoditizing space. Now, you may take offense at that. And you may say, well, Jose, how can you even say that? And the reality is, in almost every category, your customer, your best prospect, and we'll come to that in a moment, has options. And those options are other companies that offer something similar to yours, close enough. So if you make a punch press, there are other ways to put holes in things. May not be a punch press, your technology may be laser holes or whatever, but you're basically solving the, I need to put holes in stacks of paper problem at scale, for example. Or if you offer professional service, let's say you're a CPA firm. Well, there are lots of CPA firms. And you might think, well, none like ours, not exactly like ours, because we do this. We specialize in a subset of all accounting, for example, or we serve a certain customer. And those are all commendable things. And that's exactly my point. If you don't make those distinctions, if you don't think about those things that set you apart in a meaningful way, then you're just commodity. And the fact that you exist in and of itself is not differentiation enough. If that were the case, Apple wouldn't have to worry about all the Google uh, Android phones, which they do worry about. So think about that. The the company that is most synonymous with cutting edge innovation, differentiation, uh, truly standing out from a crowd would be Apple. And the kind of the dictionary definition of a company with a very differentiated value proposition. And yet when they launched the iPhone, I guess around 2006, based on their iPod technology as it evolved into the iPhone, Uh, They held that touch, they created that category of like a touch screen without keys, a stateless device that could be anything you needed it to be. They created that category and they enjoyed kind of not not only dominance, but sole position in a brand new category of a device because it really wasn't about a phone. Now the potential for it was a knowledge device really right out of Star Trek, but 300 years earlier. And they enjoyed that unique alone at the mountaintop experience for about two years. That's it. And that's Apple with billions. I mean, at the time, they probably had 30, 40 billion in cash in reserves. So they could do any, you know, from a business point of view, they could do anything they wanted to do whenever they wanted to do it. That's that reality. How about you? If you're not that size company, if you're a privately held firm in the middle market, 10, 20, $30 million a year, $5 million a year, or you're a, a private practitioner, you're a consultant, 
uh, something like that, then the reality is it's not likely, not impossible, but not likely you're going to create something that the world has never seen before. The, re the, the, the approach has to be more of, I need to stand out for my target audience in a way that's meaningful to them. It, it's not being different, strange, but being different, important. And there's another aspect to the competitive edge, which is also things you do internally to help you win. So one thing is a value proposition. The other thing is make sure your value delivery, right? So we look at value proposition is essentially your promises to your best target audience. Your value delivery is your execution. How well do you actually deliver against those promises? And this is something you should not take for granted. And people do at their home peril all the time. Um, you may not be as good at the doing as you think you are, or you may be adequate, but not great. And you keep the business because the switching costs are so great for that company that they kind of keep you on until they get exasperated enough, or somebody offers them something that says, well, your, your bank takes 72 hours to clear a check. We'll clear it within two hours. So, well, is that a big deal? Well, for the right audience, it's a very big deal. And that could cause somebody to switch their 20 year banking relationship from bank A to bank B. That's just one example. So think about your value delivery as really knowing, do you fulfill consistently, like at a high degree of consistency, do you fulfill the promises you make in your value proposition? And then we look at your marketing and not just marketing big picture. And, and I've done plenty of big picture strategic marketing. Uh, and I believe how you refine your value prop is a marketing and strategy activity, but I'm talking now about marketing programs. Make sure you have marketing programs. If you're in B2B, especially marketing programs that generate leads. Let me just say that again, because there's a lot of marketing programs that could generate what are often called now, and, and I'm glad they're using the term now, you know, vanity stats. Uh, we've increased uh, uh, visitors to our website by 100%. Uh, we have uh, this many more, 75% more downloads of our, of our content. We're getting more views on our YouTube channel or our social media gets a lot of engagement. Has it turned into any more convertible opportunities for you? If you're in B2B, you sell an expensive service, a $10,000 service, a million dollar machine, uh, getting uh, likes and conversational engagement you may argue, and your marketing people may argue, well, that kind of paves the way. It softens the earth ahead of us. And there's some truth to that. I believe in branding. I believe in aesthetics. I believe you should look good. If you want to look, if you want to sell a million dollar solution, you should look like you are a million dollar company or a million dollar, a company that sells million dollar solutions. But ultimately you have to look at your marketing spend, your marketing activity, your marketing resources. Do they give you uh, to use a sports term, that they give you the at-bats that you need. And so you have to diagram where your at-bats coming from. So again, very larger, uh, larger companies do that more routinely now. There's a lot more marketing analytics. There's uh, people are really connecting their Salesforce platform to other engines that track all of that stuff. But if you're in the mid-market, if you're barely using your Salesforce license, you're not doing anything else, you're not even keeping a spreadsheet, I would say just keep a tick file of where did the lead come from? That's a simple question. Where did the lead come from? And so, and, and then the fourth thing, so these are four competitive edge competencies. Make sure you have a sharp value proposition. Make sure you deliver against those value promises. Make sure your marketing programs, your marketing processes, your marketing investments, actually that you can tie back to opportunities generated. And then do you convert opportunities? And all too often I find in the small and mid market, the, the conversion of opportunities is, is your sales function. It makes sense. And that's true of any size company, but in smaller companies and the more industrial the company, I've just found that the sales person or the people charged with sales are just not often that great at selling because they got those positions often because the leadership team or the ownership like the fact that they really understood the technology. They were really product knowledgeable. And, and I believe in product knowledge. That's one of the seven key mindsets. And I'll talk about that in some other episode. 
seven key sales mindsets is product knowledge, a desire to understand what I sell, how it fits and what problems it solves and how it solves them. But, but going beyond that, uh, you need to have sales acumen. You need to know how to engage a sales process. You need to have a sales process. So we look at that fourth uh, competitive edge competency as being, do you really have uh, the ability to take those at-bats and hit them for base hits, doubles, triples, home runs? Can you score off of those opportunities? So your value proposition captures the idea of that you really know who your best customer is and what their biggest problems are that you can solve and how you solve them uniquely. Your value delivery is that you in fact do those things. You can execute against those promises. Your marketing has to create at-bats for you and your sales process has to actually convert those at-bats uh, consistently. And usually that means you have a good process, you have good skills, and it's a different set of skills than just product knowledge. It's not enough to talk about your machine and what it does, but you also have to understand some of the human factors how to really get into what the needs are of your target customer at the situational level. So you say, wait a second, didn't we do that with the value prop? You may have done it for the value prop at the top level for that category of companies. So I'm gonna to sell to my services to mid-sized CPA firms that themselves focus on high wealth, high net worth individuals, just to give you a categorization and it could sound that specific. That's great, but now, when, I actually, when I'm actually talking to a partner at one of those firms, how good am I at converting? Now, next time we get together, we're gonna to talk about four dimensions of converting interest and creating alignment, converting interest and creating alignment within an actual sales situation. So if you wanna learn more about the competitive edge, how to build one for yourself, how to deploy it, and how we might be able to help you with it, you can go to our website, at valueprop, that's V-A-L-U-E-P-R-O-P.com forward slash edge. We'll talk all about the competitive edge program and how we can even have a conversation about it, see if it's a fit. And if you'd like to connect with me uh, on LinkedIn, happy to connect with you on LinkedIn to make it easy. We created a domain that directs right to my LinkedIn page. It's Jose Palomino, J-O-S-E-P-A-L-O-M-I-N-O.com, josepalomino.com. And connect with me on LinkedIn, drop me a message, let me know how I might be of service to you. And if you're a business owner and you think you have an interesting competitive edge story, drop a line uh, to me on LinkedIn. And uh, we, we do owner interviews all the time as part of this podcast. We'd love to have you on our show, get your insights about what's going on in your world and how you are actually creating an edge, how you are winning in these uh, really tough, competitive, and changing markets. So until then, to your success, Jose Palomino signing off. Hey, thanks for listening to another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. If you like this episode, and if you like the series, make sure you subscribe below. And also, if you liked it, please do review it. When people are looking for something exciting to listen to, especially the kind of content we're bringing, which is practical insights for B2B companies, this is a place and a free resource that they can take advantage of. Let them know about it with your review. So subscribe, review, enjoy. Thanks again.